Hello students, good morning. Welcome to my class. Today we are going to discussing about a very interesting subject that is 12th economics. Before going for the further studies, first of all I would like to clear you some basic points regarding the economic subject. Okay. Now listen here, as we know all economics is very wide subject and studying the economics as a whole may create the confusion in the minds of the students. Yes, that is why to overcome this problem, Professor Ragnar Fritsch in the year 1933 has divided the economics into two parts. Okay, Professor Ragnar Fritsch has divided the economics into how many parts? Two parts. Okay, and this will make the students to understand this subject very clearly. Okay, see here, here economics is divided into two equal parts. One part is microeconomics, another part is macroeconomics. Okay, here you should have to know the meaning of micro and macro. Micro means what? Here always a micro represents means is small. Micro means what here? Small and macro means just like opposite of micro here micro means small and macro means large okay to understand the meaning of microeconomics and macroeconomics i will give you a very best example okay here i will give you one example of a forest yes okay listen here if i take the example of a forest and i am going to studying about a single tree in that forest then it is called as microeconomics and if we study the whole forest then it is called macroeconomics as yes, understood the meaning of microeconomics and macroeconomics means under microeconomics we will consider only the individual things not the total things Okay, and in the macroeconomics, we will consider the total means the aggregate things of the economy. Again, to simplify the meaning of microeconomics and macroeconomics, I will give you one more example. Okay, here I will give you the example of a family. Now, we are going to studying the income of a family. Here in a family there are three members A, B and C. As we are going to studying the income of the family we should have to know the income or the earnings of A, B and C. We should have to know what here the earnings of A, B and C. Okay, let us take the earnings of A is 1000 rupees. Earning of B is 2000 rupees and earning of C is 1000 rupees. Yes, then what is the total income of this family here? That is 4000 rupees. Yes, is it right? Okay, now listen here very carefully. Here, what we are studying here, here we are studying the income of the family. Yes. Then what is microeconomics here? If we are study the individual income of A or the individual income of B or the individual income of C, then it is called microeconomics. And if we study the total income of this family or the aggregate income of the family then it is known as macroeconomics yes everyone understood no then what is microeconomics and what is macroeconomics here very simple meaning of microeconomics is studying the small part of the economics is called microeconomics and studying the large part of the economics is called macroeconomics. This is the very simple meaning of microeconomics and macroeconomics. I think everyone cleared the meaning of microeconomics and macroeconomics. Okay. Now, later we will discuss about the macroeconomics. Now, we will deal with the microeconomics. That is part 1 book microeconomics. 
yes okay now listen here in part 1 that is microeconomics we have total 6 chapters yes how many chapters are there in part 1 that is 6 chapters out of that the first chapter is which one is the first chapter that is introduction yes introduction of what it is the introduction of microeconomics okay and this chapter we are going to studying some points in that the first point is a simple economy the second one is central problems of an economy and the third one is organization of economic activities in that the centrally planned economy and the market economy and the fourth point is positive and normative economics in this we are going to studying the difference between positive and normative economics and the fifth point is microeconomics and macroeconomics this one you have already knew the meaning of micro and macroeconomics and here we will study the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics and now i am going to take the first point that is a simple economy yes before studying about the simple economy first of all tell me what does economy means economy means what okay here i will give you a meaning of economics in simple words it is a system which provides people the means to work and earn a living in simple words economy means what that is a system which provides people the means to work and earn a living means to work means what it provides an opportunity to work yes and earns a living earns a living means it helps the people to earn their livelihood yes right then what is economics here it is a system which provides people the means to work and earns a living okay listen here in our society all the individuals are engaged in any any activity okay any one activity yes means every person should have to work no one is free from work yes is it right okay Listen here, here I taken the example of a farmers. Yes, here the farmers are working in the field. Why they will work in the field to earn their livings? Just like that only, each and every person should have to work to earn their livings. Okay, here I taken the second example as industries. Here industries also do the same they will produce goods and services for what to earn their livings and here companies companies also work something for what earn a livings each and every person are engaged in work for what to earn their livings yes is it right now we will go for a simple economy okay then what is a simple economy in very simple words i have given one simple meaning for a simple economy okay see here studying the economical or financial activities of a country is called simple economy yes what is simple economy studying the economical financial activities of a country is called what here simple economy and what it includes see here it includes the everyday needs of an individual why it includes only an individual because this topic we are studying under the microeconomics microeconomics consists only individual things not the aggregate things that is why the simple economy includes the needs of an individuals like food clothing shelter transport water and other facilities like roads and railways okay see here as we know the wants of individual is unlimited but here i taken only the basic needs of an individual means the basic needs which are very essential for an individual 
okay those wants i have taken here means under simple economy it includes what the everyday needs of an individual like food clothing shelter transport and many other things the whole picture shows about the simple economy yes understood the meaning of simple economy then what is simple economy studying the economical or financial activities of a country is called what here simple economy and what it includes the everyday needs of an individual yes now come to the next point the second point that is the central problems of an economy yes then what are the central problems of an economy and why the central problems of an economy will arise here there is a question why the central problems of an economy will arise as what is the reason for that okay see the answer here due to scarcity of resources or due to scarcity of economical resources the central problems of an economy will arise okay then here there are two main words you have to see very carefully that is scarcity and resources these two terms will often used in the economic subject and these are very important to you to understand its meaning okay see here due to scarcity of resources economic problem will arise but what do you mean by scarcity and what do you mean by resources have you know okay now see here scarcity means what here i will give you a simple meaning for scarcity okay now listen here scarcity refers to limitations of supply in relation to demand for a commodity scarcity means what it is a limitation of supply limitation of supply means what limited supply in relation to demand for a commodity means here i taken example of a commodity means there is a particular commodity and the supply of that that commodity is very limited and demand for that commodity is very more it creates what scarcity of that commodity it shows what scarcity of that commodity okay see this picture here why the scarcity will arise due to limited resources okay in our society the resources are very limited and the human wants are unlimited this will lead for what scarcity yes understood the meaning of scarcity now see this beam balance beam balance shows what here that side there are means the balance there is no match between limited and unlimited resources and wants of a human being that this that side shows the limited resources and here shows the unlimited wants that each and every individual has in our society okay now the next point is resources what are the resources okay there are factors of production like land labor capital and organization these are the scarce resources in our nation in our india or in our nation there is a scarcity of land okay by that we may not cultivate more in the land and labors also are very scarce means here capital and entrepreneurs are what here resources that to limited resources now the next point is central problems of an economy okay here we will take the central problems of an economy now i have told you already why the central problems of an economy will arise why it will arise due to scarcity of economical resources the central problem will arise then what are the central problems of an economy here there are three major problems of economy okay how many problems are there there are three major problems of an economy in that number 1 what to produce second one is how to produce and the third one is for whom to produce and these three points and these three problems in detail we will study in the next class thank you